Amen. 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 They sure were a blessing. Yeah. 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 And uh, somebody said, why'd you sing them instead of call somebody else in? Uh, you ain't going to beat what you heard. Yeah. 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 Amen. I preach all over the country. Right. I'm with singing groups and singers and, uh, you know, uh, all the time. And and I say that it's not because we're sitting here, because it's true. Uh, I, I've preached with a lot of singing groups. Uh, I'm in Texas, uh, the Rochester song, and I preach, and uh, I, I've been with a lot of singing groups. Uh, and uh, to be honest, they're no more, they, they're, they're not any better yeah. than what we got. Yeah. Right. 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 And, yeah. uh, so, uh, I appreciate uh, these ladies, yes. uh, and I appreciate the good singing that they did. Now, uh, tonight, I'd like to tell you to take your Bible and turn somewhere, but the, ideally, you're just going to be looking at the screen tonight. Uh, I don't have a text verse for you, uh, but we're going to look at a ton of scripture. Now, like I said earlier, uh, this is the, the most efficient, fastest uh, way to handle the subject. So we're going to look at some verses, and uh, we're going to uh, show you what the Bible says. Now, uh, tonight, if you believe in a perfect God, and you believe that everything that he does is perfect. Y'all believe that, right? Yes, sir. I believe God ever made a mistake. I believe God's perfect in everything that he does. And he's perfect in everything that he doesn't do. And so if you believe in a perfect God, you have no alternative but to believe that he left us a perfect book. To me, it is the, the, uh, the utmost hypocrisy to stand and tell a group of people that God is perfect, yeah. but His book is flawed. Right. That's hypocrisy. Yeah. And if God is perfect, then God left us a perfect book. Right. Yeah. And so tonight, there's hundreds of different versions of the Scripture. And the question tonight is this, which one's right? Amen. Uh, I mean, they all can't be right. right. One says one thing, one says something else. Right. So listen, when things say different things, one of them, uh, both of them, uh, uh, one of them can't be right. They can't all be right. And so tonight, the question is this, which Bible is correct? I mean, if we're going to follow a perfect God, we better find out what kind of, uh, where his perfect book is, and we better hang on to that for dear life. Right. And so tonight, the words of God are very important. Amen. This is what Jesus said in John 14, 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my, not my thoughts, not my ideas, uh, but my words. Right. God is interested in words. Amen. Brother Sam was here a few weeks ago and he even got down to letters. Uh, but God is interested in words. John 15, 7. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, Ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Well, some folks seem to think we don't have these words. Now, how in the world is God going to fulfill this promise for us to ask what we will, and it shall be done unto us, if we don't have His words? Right. If we don't have His words, that makes this promise of none effect. Yeah. So we must have them somewhere. Right. 2 Timothy 4 2, Paul told Timothy, preach the word. Tonight, I, I don't have, if I don't have a perfect Bible, I ain't got nothing to preach. Right. I'm wasting my time. I'm preaching my ideas, my thoughts, what I believe, right. my pet peeves. No, we must have the Word of God if He told Timothy to preach the Word. Right. Look at this, is what He said in John 17, 17. Sanctify them through Thy truth. Thy Word is true. Now, if we don't have a perfect Bible and we don't have the words of God, how could you and I ever be sanctified? Right. It's impossible. All through this book you'll find references. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my ideas, my thoughts, my feelings. No, he that receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Right. Now here's the thing. How is God going to judge him for not receiving 
Jesus' words if he don't have them. If they've never been presented to him, since some people seem to think we don't have the perfect word of God, how could God judge a man for not receiving them if that man doesn't have them? Right. You see what hypocrisy exists? Amen. <clears throat> Psalms 12, 6. The words of the Lord are pure words. Yeah. As silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Notice verse 7. Thou, not me, but God, thou shalt keep them. What's he talking about? What's he going to keep? Them words right up there. Yeah. That's what God's going to keep. Thou shalt keep them. O oh Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Right. So now you have a promise in the book that says God's not only going to give you his words, not only is he going to judge you by those words, but he's going to preserve and keep those words forever. That's what the Bible says. Amen. This is what Jesus said, Matthew 24, 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words yeah. shall not pass. So for somebody to say we don't have the perfect, inerrant, infallible Word of God, either Jesus was lying or they're lying. Right. Genesis 2, 17, the very first trick the devil ever pulled. Eve is standing in the garden. A serpent comes down and talks to her. He this is what God told her first. But of, the tree of, uh, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, Thou shalt surely die. The devil comes along and this is what he does. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. You know what the devil did? He added one word to what God said right. and ruined yeah. humanity. Right. Yeah. The devil has not changed his tactics yeah. since Genesis chapter number 3. And it's, as long as it's still working, he's, he's going to continue to do it. Yeah. And so all he did was add one word and messed up what God said. Right. Now hear me tonight. This, he is still active in that case of changing and manipulating what God said. Right. This is what David said in Psalm 119. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Why? That I might not sin against thee. You know what keeps you from sin? That book. Right. Right. Now if you ain't got the words, guess what? What's going to keep you from sin? Right. Over and over and over. Look at this. And you know how you got saved? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Amen. How can sinners be saved if we don't have His Word? Right, right. Now what you need to know, there are three main uh, uh, manuscripts that all Bibles are translated from. The first one is called Vaticanus. It is found in a Vatican library in Rome. It's Catholic. Right. And if you know anything about the Catholic Church, immediately just knowing where it was found would make this manuscript suspect. Amen. The second one is Sinaiticus. It was found in a trash dump in Alexandria, Egypt. Uh, it's a, Egypt's the top of the world. All versions except your King James Bible come from these two corrupt manuscripts. Sinaiticus and Vaticanus. Every, see, a lot of people think that what well, preacher all they did was take a King James Bible and go through it and take out the these and the thou. No. Yes. No, they didn't. Right. Yeah. They translated the, the, those new versions of the Bible yeah. from completely different manuscripts. Yeah. Yeah. Now, tonight, uh, you'll find that these two manuscripts are older. This is the thinking of uh, scholars. That because Vaticanus and Sinaiticus are older, therefore, they are more accurate. And in a general sense, that would make great sense, generally speaking. But you realize the reason they are older is because nobody used them. Yeah. Right. So when they found the Vaticanus and Sinaiticus, they were so corrupt that the church refused to use them, and they stuck them on a shelf somewhere, and that's why they are older. The, the, when when the, the, the church got a hold of the Antioch manuscripts, the Textus Receptus, 
It was so accurate and so right that it would be used and worn out and rewritten and worn out and rewritten and worn out because it was being used all across the church and people would use it and read it. It would get worn out so they would rewrite it. That's why the Textus Receptus seems younger than Vaticanus and Sinaiticus. Right, right. That makes sense to everybody, everybody with me. They said, well, these two are older. they got to be more accurate. No, they were so corrupt, nobody would use them. So they stuck them on a the shelf and it grew dust. But your, your King James Bible is translated from the Textus Receptus. It means received text. That Textus Receptus is from Antioch, Syria. May I remind you, they were called Christians first at Antioch. Right. And so that's where your King James Bible comes from. It's not a matter of changing these and that. Yeah. It's a completely different set of manuscripts. And so tonight we're going to look at some of them and just I'm just going to point out a few things and show them to you. Let me ask you a question. Who killed Goliath? David. Every little boy and little girl in here knows who killed Goliath. Right. David killed him, right? Let's see what your King James Bible says. 2 Samuel 21, 19. And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines where Elhanan, the son of Jeroboam, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath. That's what your King James Bible said. You see that? Now, Hanan slew Goliath's brother. Look at the new version. This is what your, the NIV says. In another battle with the Philistines at Gob, El Hanan, the son of Jeroboam, the Bethlehemite, killed Goliath. Well, wait a minute. You said David killed him. Well, either David killed him and this, this version's wrong. Or you've been lied to your whole life. Right. Now, that is a clear-cut uh, mistake. That is a clear-cut falsehood. Yeah. That is a clear-cut contradiction. Because when you get to 1 Chronicles 5, in the NIV, it tells you David killed him. Right. You've got a direct contradiction. You know what that means? That ain't worth, that ain't worth fooling with. Right. Or, if you believe the NIV, you believe God made a mistake. Yeah. Now that's what the NIV said. This is what the message said. Dear God, this, this you want to talk about a train wreck. And, and yet, another battle with the Philistines at God, Elhanan, the son of Jair, the weaver of Bethlehem. I don't, even, I don't even know where he got that. The weaver of Bethlehem killed Goliath. The message says Elhanan killed Goliath. This is what the American Standard Version says. Elhanan, the son of Jeroboam, the Bethlehemite, Slew Goliath. Now let me ask you again, who killed Goliath? Yeah. David. Right. Your King James got it right when it says uh, Jeroboam slew the brother of Goliath. Yeah. Right. All the new versions say, they, uh, say uh, El Hayden killed Goliath. Now let me ask this, who's the fourth man in the fiery furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and, and Amigo? <laughs> it's the Lord Jesus. Right. Look. Look what it says. He answered and said, Oh, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Here's a new version. Here's what the ASV says. Walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the aspect of the fourth is like a Son of the God. Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. That's a problem. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Here's what the NIV says. Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the God. You see what you did? You just cheapened the Lord Jesus. Right. Right. Look at this one. A son of the God. Let me ask you something. What's the root of all evil? You can talk back to him. Come on. Money. money. The, no, it ain't money. It's the love, love of money. money. Trust me, I'm, I, I must be pure as a driven snow. Because I ain't got none. If money's a root of all evil, I must be as right as anybody. But it ain't money, it's the love of money. Here's what your King James Bible says. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Let's see what the new one says. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. You know why they change it? Because they produce the Bible and make money. They're after money. Yes, sir. And you, you ain't going to cut your own throat. So they, they change it to say, well, it's the root of all kinds. No, God said it's the root of all. Right. The love of money is the root of all 
Yeah. Not all kind. New American Standard Version. The love of money is a root of all sorts of evil. You see the difference? Now some of this is old hat for you, but there's some new stuff coming up. Just stay with me. This is what the message said. Dear God, this poor fellow's a train wreck. But if it's only money these leaders are after, they're self-destructed in no time. Lust for money brings trouble, nothing but trouble going down that path. Some lose their footing in the faith completely and live to regret it bitterly ever after. <laughs> I'd like to talk to him and say, Sir, are you on drugs? I legitimately want to ask him that. Here it is again. That's the new King James. For the love of money is a root of all kinds. Yep. Right. What about God's promise to preserve His Word? We just read it. The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation. Right. That is a promise that God will preserve His Word. Right. Here's, what the new, here's what the NIV says. And the words of the Lord are flawless, like silver refined in a furnace of clay, purified seven times. Oh Lord, you will keep us. There ain't no, there's no reason to put the word us in there. He ain't talking about people. Right. He's talking about the words of God. Oh, yeah. How do you get us out of the words of God? Right. Yeah. There's, no, there's no reasonable explanation to put us in there. The context is not dealing with people. The context is dealing with God keeping His word. Right. That's what the NIV says. Here's what the New American Standard says. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried to furnace on earth refined seven times. You, Lord, will keep them. You will preserve him. Who? Who's he preserving? Yeah. Yeah. You, ain't got, you ain't got to be the head teller at Walmart to figure out the context from verse 6 to verse 7 does not change. It's still dealing with the Word of God. Right. Amen. God's... No. God's words are pure words, pure silver refined seven times in the fires of His Word. What? Words refined seven times in the fire of His Word kill. <laughs> pure on earth as well as in heaven. God keep us. Say. New Living Translation. The Lord's promises are pure, like silver refined in a furnace, purified seven times over. Therefore, Lord, we know you will protect the oppressed. <coughs> How do you get oppressed out of God preserving His Word? Yeah. Amen. What about the command to study your Bible? Yeah. 2 Timothy 2.15. One of the greatest verses for unlocking the treasures of the Word of God. Dispensational truth is found in this verse right here. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. One of the most important verses in the entire Bible about understanding your Bible. Amen. God commands us not only to read it, He commands us to study it. Right. New Living Translation. Work hard so you can present yourself to God and receive His approval. Be a good worker. One who does not need to be ashamed and wholly correct, correctly explains the word of truth. What happened to rightly divided? They took it out. What happened to study to show thyself approved? They changed it to work hard. Yeah. Here's another one. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. A workman who does not need to be ashamed, who correctly handles the word of truth. Where's the rightly divided? Where's the study to show thyself approved? Amen. You see what you just did to God's people who, who fall for that? Mm -hmm. Acts 8.37 Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's what your King James Bible says. It's missing in most of the new versions. They took it out. And let me tell you what a crook is. It goes from verse 36 and then it goes, it skips to verse 38. Yeah. They completely remove verse 37. Right. Yeah. This is what the message said. 
And they continued down the road. They came to a stream of water. The eunuch said, here's water. Why can't I be baptized? He ordered the chariot to stop. They both went down the water. And Philip baptized him on the spot. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of God suddenly took Philip off. And that was the last the eunuch could saw of him. But he didn't mind. He had, he had what he come for. And went on down the road as happy as he could. <laughs> You mean to tell me that Stephen was so careless he didn't even question this man before he baptized him? In the King James Bible, he questions him. He said, what, what, right. he said man, there's some water. What about me getting baptized? He said that if you believe, you can. Right. He said, well, this is what I believe. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And Stephen said, that'll do it. And he went down and baptized him. There's no interrogation when they do leave me. Here's what it says. And they were going along the road that came to a place where there was some water. The official said, look, here's some water. Why can't I be baptized? Where's that? I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Right. Right. Why would you attack and take out something that calls Jesus the Son of God? Amen. I'll give you one guess. He did that. Mm -hmm. This is what your Bible calls your Savior in Revelation 22, 16. The offspring of David and the bright and morning star. You see that? That's a reference to the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. He's called the morning star. When you get to Isaiah 14, 12 in the new versions, this is a reference to the devil falling from heaven. Yeah. How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star. It calls the devil after the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. You have replaced the name of the devil with the name of Jesus Christ. Now I wonder who did that? The devil. Here's what it should say. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did us weaken the nation? You see the difference? The new version is called the devil Jesus. Yeah. Or they call Jesus the devil. Right. Colossians 1.14 And in the King James Bible In whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins. You know how you got saved? You know how you got forgiveness of sins? It's through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ right. being applied to your soul right. and washing away your sins. Here's what all the new versions say. The son who got us out of the pit we were in Got rid of the sins we were doomed to keep repeating. Well, what did he do with them? How did he get rid of them? Where did he put them? You wouldn't know if you read the message. Yeah. This is the NIV. In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. Where's the blood? New American Standard Version. In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Again, where's the blood? Right. They took it out. Now, listen. We've already seen where he's attacked the deity of Christ. We've already seen where they're taking the blood out. You know who wants to, who wants to remove the deity of Christ and take the blood out of the Bible? Right. The devil. Right. Yeah. right. Here's what the, the New Revised Standard Version says. In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Where's the blood? They took it out. Right. Holman Christian Standard Bible. In whom we have redemption. The forgiveness of sin. All those new versions take the blood out. This is a super popular Bible. It's uh, that is that is caught fire, especially in like Southern Baptist circles, the ESV, uh, and it is super popular right now. And this is what it says: "In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin." Where's the blood? Took it out. Notice this. For we are not as many which corrupt the Word of God. That means monkey with it, mess with it, twist it up, defile it. Right. That's what your King James Bible says. But guess what the new versions have done? They have corrupted the Word of God. Amen. So let's see how they, how they interpret this verse. Unlike so many, we do not peddle the Word of God. That's what the NIV says. New American Standard says this. For we are not like many peddling. The Word of God. A lot of people try to get rich from preaching God's message, but we are God's sincere messengers, and by the power of Christ, we speak our message with God as our witness. 
got nothing in to do to kind of change the complete meaning of it. Amen. Look at this. For we are not as many as so many peddling the word of God. It's a new King James. Somebody's messing with your Bible. Yeah. Somebody's trying to get you away from a King James Bible and get you on a new version of the Bible. Yeah. Now it takes it attacks the deity of Christ. It calls Jesus the devil. Uh, it, it has uh, changed the meaning of, of complete verses. They've got rid of, rid of studying to show yourself approved. Right the dividing the word of truth. They took it all out. Right. How in the world? Is it any wonder that the church has become so weak and so lame and, and so uh, so uh, and has no strength or no power? We we ain't got a Bible in right. those churches. Right. Is it any wonder the Holy Ghost don't move in some right. Is it any wonder uh, we've accepted the world's philosophies and we brought that trash into church and the average church looks like uh, a flipping rock concert. Right. The average church uh, has liberal contemporary music and come as you are, dress as you please, do what you want. Is it any wonder we've adopted those standards? We don't have a Bible. Right. One of the greatest verses dealing with the coming of our Savior. Abraham's taking Isaac up, going to slay him. Him and Isaac start up the hill, and he looks at his daddy, and he says, I see the fire, and I see the wood, but where is the lamb? This is Abraham's response as it rings down through eternity. It is a prophetic verse dealing with the coming of our Savior. It, sa it says, God will provide himself a lamb. Yep. You know what God did when Jesus showed up? God provided himself yeah. as the lamb. Right. That's what God did. Yeah. He turned himself into the lamb and died for us. You only get that reference in the King James Bible. Look what the new one says. In our Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. You see how they messed it up and they killed the prophetic reference? Yeah. Abraham said, this is the message, Son, God will see to it that there's a sheep for the burnt offering. See what you did? You just killed the reference to the coming of the Savior. Right. You've killed the prophecy concerning it. Abraham said in a New American Standard, God will provide for Himself the Lamb for the burnt offering. You see what you did? You just murdered the, the prophetic reference. Yeah. New King James. My son, God will provide for Himself the Lamb for a burnt offering. You see it? Somebody's messing with your Bible. Right. One of the most encouraging verses in all of the Bible. For I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Let's see how the new version came to it. I can do everything through Him. Who? Who? Who's the Him? Yeah, amen. You got a new version of the Bible, you won't know who Him is. Right. I can do all things through Him. Who? Who? Who are you talking about? Holman Christian. I am able to do all things through Him who strengthens me. Okay, who are you talking about? Could be anybody. Your King James Bible says I knew all things through, through talking about Christ Jesus. They take Jesus out of the verse. The new ESV. I knew all things through Him who strengthens me. Who? You talking about yourself? You talking about your daddy? You talking about your brother? Who are you talking about? Amen. You don't know unless you got a King James Bible. Right. None of them. Terrible, terrible, blasphemous uh, reference. This is your King James Bible. And Joseph and his mother. You see that? But the King James Bible gets it right. Joseph was not Jesus' daddy. Yeah. Right. God the Father was Jesus' right. daddy. Right. Yeah. But look at the new version. The child's father and mother. You just took away the virgin birth of our Savior. Right. Amen. Right. Right. You just killed it and made Jesus a man. Just like any other man. Right. Which means his sacrifice was insufficient to pay for our sin. Right. If he was just a man. Right. See how sneaky the devil is? And there's thousands of, uh, um, hundreds of thousands of Christians who read these versions who have no idea. Right. It's not that they're bad people. They just don't know. Right. There's thousands of preachers that will get up on a Sunday morning right. and preach out of these different versions. And them, nor their people have any clue that their Bible has been corrupted. Amen. See that? The child's father and mother. 
New American Standard, and his father and mother. Right. Your King James Bible got it right. Joseph and his mother. Yeah. Yeah. ESV. And his father and mother marveled at what was said about him. If Joseph was Jesus' daddy, we're all going to hell. Yes, yeah, sir. Right. That means he had sinful blood and his sacrifice was insufficient to please God and to make the atonement for our sins. Right, right. What about this one? For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. That's a Trinity verse. That is a verse concerning God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, all being God, and they're all, uh, they're all one. Well, for there are three that testify the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three are in agreement. Now you listen, you just attack the deity of Christ. Now you're attacking the Godhead, the truth. Right. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Here it is. Jesus is God. Here it is. What? God was manifest in the flesh. You know who showed up here? Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. According to that verse, Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. Do you yeah. see it? It's as plain as the nose on your face that God was manifest in the flesh. That Jesus Christ was God. Right. But look, beyond all, but beyond all question, the mystery of godliness is great. He appeared in the body. Who appeared? And who was he? You see what you did? You just attacked the deity of Christ. Yes, sir. Again. Right. All throughout those new versions, they attacked. The deity of Christ. Amen. He appeared in a body. Here's the ASV. And without controversy, great is the mystery of God in this. He who was manifest in the flesh. Well, who was manifest in the flesh? And who was it? His name was Jesus Christ, right. and he was God in this. Amen. 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 If you got the right Bible. Here it is, home and Christian. And most certainly the mystery of God in this is great. He was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit. Who? Who? And where's the reference to him being God? Right. It's God. They took it out. Again, I'll give you one guess who's responsible for attacking the deity of Christ. ESV. Great indeed, we confess as a mystery of godliness, he was manifest in the flesh. Your King James Bible got it right. Yeah. God was manifest yeah. in flesh. Right. Hosea 11, what about this one? Now I'm going to show you something that is just as basic uh, as third grade math. Ephraim compasseth me about with lies, and the house of Israel with deceit. But Judah yet ruleth. You see that. Ruleth with God. That's what your King James Bible says. When you get a new version, look what it says. Judah rebels against God. Now wait a minute. If they're ruling how, with God, how can they be rebelling against God? <laughs> now the question is, were they ruling or were they rebelling? Because they ain't the same. Your King James Bible says they were ruling. Here it is again, the Good News Bible and the people of Judah are still rebelling. That ain't what it says. It says ruleth with God. The ESV just, just jumps ship altogether and says Judah still walks with God. You see that? He ain't talking about walking with God. He's talking about ruling with God. Right. Amen. You've killed the prophetic reference to the millennium. Amen. You've attacked the deity of Christ. You've attacked His blood. Now you're just changing words at random. Your King James Bible says ruleth. They changed it to rebelleth, which is exactly the opposite. And they even changed it to walking. Yeah. I think what he said, he said ruleth. Look, Homer Christian departs from the faith as well. Ephraim surrounds me with lies, the house of Israel with deceit. Judah still wanders with somebody. Hell. Wanders with hell. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. There's a vast difference between wandering and ruling. Yeah. 
Anybody with a third grade education can see there's a difference between ruling with God and wandering with God. And by the way, if you're with God, you ain't wandering no one. Yeah, right. Full message. Lord have mercy. Ephraim tells lies right and left. Not a word of Israel can be trusted. Judah, meanwhile, is no better addicted to chief God. That's a vast difference from Judah ruling with God. You see what they did to your Bible? You see what a crook did with your Bible? Amen. New American Standard. Ephraim surrounds me with lies and the house of Israel with deceit. Judah is also unruly. No, it says ruleth with God. Somebody's out to mess up your Bible. NIV, unruly against God. Your King James Bible got it right and said ruleth with God. Look at this, 1 John 3. One of the greatest verses concerning the eternal security of the believer found anywhere in the New Testament. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin. That is not a reference to your everyday life. Right. That is a reference to your eternal state right. before God. Amen. Of course we sin. We fail the Lord miserably. Then what does that verse mean? He cannot sin. It doesn't say he won't want to. Won't say he won't like it. It says he is unable to. He cannot sin. Because when you got saved, God took that book and cut your soul loose from your body. Yeah. Then he washed your soul clean in the blood of Christ. Right. And the Holy Ghost has sealed your soul. So when you sin now, you sin to the flesh, but it does not bleed over onto your soul. That's what he, that is what this is referencing. Right. He cannot sin. Not the flesh. He's talking about the soul. The inner man. The man on the inside of you. The soul. The part that will live forever. He's saying that part of you, it is impossible. He cannot sin. But because people don't understand the Word of God and what it means when he makes a reference like that, instead of trying to grasp the truth that God has given us and instead of trying to uh, understand what God meant, instead of going to the Lord in prayer and saying, Lord, what does this verse mean? You know how I found out what this verse meant? It troubled me for a while. I went to the Lord and said, Lord, what does that verse mean? Right. And I kept asking and I kept asking. And finally I studied my Bible and the Lord said, this is what it means. But people refuse to do that in the day we live in. So you know what they're going to do? They're going to help God out because God said something wrong. Yeah. God said we cannot sin. And of course, poor God must have lost his mind because we sin every day. So they're going to help the Lord out and look what you're going to do. <laughs> Those who are the children of God do not continue in sin. Continue to sin. For God's very nature is in them because God is their Father. They can't continue in sin. <laughs> they change the verse from the eternal meaning and are standing before God right. to making this verse talk about the life that we live down here. That is not what the verse is talking about. The verse is talking about our standing before God. When we got saved, uh, our eternal standing is different from our... Uh, Y'all heard me teach on standing or state. And, and, and so, listen, our standing before God is different than our, the life we live down here. You understand right. that, right? Because the Bible says we're seated together in heavenly places, yet I'm stuck down here. You want it? So they, they couldn't grasp that, that simple truth. So you know what they did? They helped God out and changed it. They can't continue in sin. Talking about this life. Look at this one. Those who are God's children do not continue sinning because the new life from God remains in them. They are not able to go on sinning because they become sinning. They're not able to go on sinning. You're making it about this life down here, not the eternal life right. and our standing before God. See how they did it? They said, poor old God must have got that wrong because he said we cannot sin. And everybody knows we sin every day. So we're going to help the Lord out and change that and fix that for the Lord since he made a mistake. Well, you boneheads, you arrogant sucker, who do you think you are to mess with God's book? Right. That's an eternal verse. That ain't a practical verse. I ain't dealing with when you, the day, your day to day living down here. Right. Listen, we got, we got eight, nine, ten year old kids that know, know better than that. But you mean to tell me a guy with 14 degrees and 27 letters behind his name ain't smart enough to figure that out? Right. Listen, I'm a redneck from West Virginia. I ain't got enough sense to tie my shoes most days, but I got enough sense to, to believe what God said. Right. And if you'll believe it, God will reveal it to you what it means. Right. Look at the They are not able to go on sin. People conceived and brought into life by God don't make a practice of sin. Really? How could they? God's seed is deep within them, making them who they are 
It's not in the nature of the God begotten to practice and parade sin. Again, you've changed it from an eternal verse to a practical verse. Right. No one born of God makes a practice of sin. No, most of us, we don't have to practice. We got it down right. I don't need no practice. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning for God's seed abides in him. And he cannot keep on sinning. See, you changed it from an eternal verse referencing our standing before God and made it about a practical day-to-day -day walk. And you ruined the verse. Let me show you this. You know what your Bible says? If you want to jump up and down and shout and run around the building. Right. Yeah. And Jesus moved with compassion. Amen. Thank God, man. Yeah. He's compassionate. Amen. Look what your new version says. And becoming angry. That's what they said about your Savior. That he got mad. He's angry. And he stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing to be made clean. Well, you, obviously he ain't willing if he got angry. Yeah, right. If he got mad about it, then why did he heal it? Look, in the NIV, Jesus was indignant. It means he was frustrated. He was out of sorts. He was mad about it. Right. See what they're doing to your Savior? Our Bible says he was compassionate. Yeah. Yeah. One says he was angry, the other says he was indignant. Ecclesiastes 8. And so I saw the wicked buried who had come and gone from the place of the holy, and they were forgotten. You see that? Let me show you what a new version says. Then too, I saw the wicked buried, those who used to come and go from the holy place, and received praise. Were they forgotten or were they praised? Right. You know what you're telling the sinner? Go ahead and sin, you'll be praised. Yeah. Then I saw the wicked buried that used to go in and out of the holy place and were praised. The Bible says they were forgotten, yeah. Yeah. not praised. Amen. You know what you're doing? You're encouraging wicked sinners. See that? Wicked. You're encouraging the wicked to go on in sin because they'd be praised. Right. Look at this one. They were honored. No, the Bible says those wicked sinners were forgotten. Yeah. Because they were wicked, because they didn't honor God, when they died, nobody remembered them. But now you're, you're trying to convince me that when the evil people, uh, uh, when evil people do evil, they'll be honored. It's a vast difference between being honored, being praised, and being forgotten. Here it is. God's Word. Then I saw wicked people given an honorable burial. They used to go in and out of the holy place. They were praised. You see that? You're encouraging sinners to continue in sin. They'll be honored and they'll be praised. Right. What about Matthew chapter number 9? But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Repentance is essential for salvation. It's you looking at the cross and you looking at your sin and you deciding, I'd rather have Jesus than this. You turn your back on sin and embrace the cross and get saved by grace. Right. You never, nobody's ever been saved by hanging on to their sin and trying to hang on to the cross at the same time. Right. God refuses to save a sinner like that. God says, if you want me, you've got to abandon your sin, turn your back on your sin, and embrace the cross. That's what it is. Right. That's what repentance is. That's what your King James Bible teaches. Yeah. Look at the new verse. But go ye and learn what this meaneth. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. What happened to repentance? Of all the things you want to take out of my King James Bible, you want to take repentance out? Yeah. Remember, our King James Bible says this. Call sinners to repentance. It stops right there and says, but sinners. Well, to what? They took repentance out. There it is again. Come to call righteous people but sinners. There's no repentance. 
For I did not come to call the righteous, but sin. What happened to repentance? It's gone. Now, there's the ESV. For I came not to call the righteous, but sin. Call them to what? According to your King James Bible, call them to repentance. Yeah. But they take repentance out of all the new versions. Right. Now, I'll give you one guess who attacks the deity of Christ. I'll give you one guess who attacks the blood. I give you one, one guess who, who pushes sinners to continue living evil and wicked so that they might be honored and praised. And I'll give you one guess who's pulling repentance out of the Bible. It's the devil. Look. But go and learn what this means. I desire compassion and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sin. Call them to what? To repentance if you got the right Bible. Right. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Hear me, it matters what gets preached out of this pulpit. Right. Yeah. It matters what version of the Bible you use. Yeah. This is not a secondary issue. Yeah. Right. This is a primary issue. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Look, for the Son of Man has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them, and they went to another village. That's what your Bible says. What a blessing. What, what an encouragement. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. Here's the new version. What happened to the rest of it? Jesus came not to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And he goes to another village. When you get to a new version, they take that part out. And it just says they went to another village. Look, ESV. And they went on to another village. Then he and his disciples went to another village. They, then they went on to another village. Almost every new version of your Bible uh, that has come out removes all that. That Jesus came not to destroy men's life, but to save them. Why would you want that out? Right. Ain't one person that would. Right. Psalm 10. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Notice, notice the results of him living that way. His ways are always grievous. You see that? That's King James Bible. New version. Holman Christian standard. His ways are always secure. The ESV. His ways prosper at all times. What? It said a man who won't fool with God has no time to think about it, has no time to worry about it. He said a man that lives that way, his ways are going to be grievous unto him. He's not going to prosper. He's going to find help on a half acre. It's going to be trouble and struggle. Right. He's going to have heart conditions. And he's going to have a bad heart. And he's going to struggle because he doesn't fool with God. But the new version say this. His ways prosper. You know what you're telling the individual who, who pushes God off? You're telling him, go ahead and push God off. Yeah. If you'll push God off, you'll prosper. Right. Yeah. Home and Christian, his ways are always secure. ESV, here it is. One of the most popular Bibles on the market. Thousands upon thousands of people are reading this. And this is what it says in Psalm 10 to those who don't know no better, who, who don't understand the issue. Look what it tells them. If you're wicked and you're full of the devil in the pride of his face, the wicked does not seek him. All his thoughts are, there is no God. His ways prosper at all times. There's thousands of people that are reading that. There's thousands of people who are believing that. There are thousands of preachers who are preaching that. Right. It matters what Bible you use. Amen. New American Standard. His ways prosper. You're telling me that a wicked sucker don't want nothing to do with God? His ways prosper. Right. Not according to my Bible. Right. My Bible says his ways are grief. Yeah. New King James. The wicked in his proud countenance does not seek God. God is in none of his thoughts. His ways are always, always, always prospering. 
You're promoting wickedness and ungodliness. Right. You're encouraging the wicked to continue to be wicked. Right. Yes. New Revised Standard Version. Notice this. Their ways prosper at all times. You're promoting wickedness. Amen. NIV, his ways are always prosperous. One of the greatest verses in the New Testament in a King James Bible. For the Son of Man has come to save that which is lost. Do you realize you go on to some Bible app where you compare all the different versions of the Bible? You can't even find this verse. It's not in the new versions. I tried to look it up so I can cut, cut copy and paste it so I can show it to you. It won't even give me the verse. I looked it up. I'll show you after church if you doubt me. I'll take you to the, to the website and you try to look up Matthew 18, 11. It goes Matthew 18, 10, Matthew 18, 12. It doesn't even have a button for you to click on to get this verse. It's not in the new version. Acts 8, 37. We've already talked about it. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They removed it. Mark 16. Runs verse 1 through verse 20 in the King James Bible. The new versions stop at verse 8. They cut out verse 9 through verse 20. It's not in a new version. Verses 9 through 20 of the last chapter of the book of Mark is not found in new versions of the Bible. They cut the, they cut the chapter off at verse 8. Now let's see what, what verses 9 through 20 say and see why they would want to cut them off. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week. Mm. Now you've attacked the resurrection. Yeah. One guess who wants that out of the Bible. You've attacked the resurrection. He appeared first to Mary Magdalene out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him and they mourned and wept. And when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. And, and they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they them. Afterwards, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at me and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every person. Not only have you attacked the resurrection, you've attacked uh, 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 missions. You've attacked the call for us to go out and tell Sarah right. of how to be saved. You've attacked soul winning. You've attacked being a witness. You've attacked, you've attacked uh, supporting missionaries. So now the resurrection and, and, and soul winning is out. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, so they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And so that after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Now you've attacked the ascension. That Jesus got up from the dead. No, we're cutting that out. You need to go into all the world and witness the folks and keep sinners out of hell. No, we're going to take that out. And now Jesus is going to get, get going back to heaven. We're taking that out. Jesus right. is sinning. Then look at verse 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Amen. Is it any wonder they don't want verses 9 through 20 in the Bible? Yeah. It's going to attack the resurrection. It's going to attack the ascension. And it's going to attack the greatest verse in the New Testament concerning you and I being a witness for the Lord Jesus. Right. Amen. Total words in the King James Bible, 790,000. 704. Total words in the NIV, 726,606. For every 11.3 words in the text, there's one missing in new versions of the Bible. That's a difference of 64,098 words. Now let me show you something. If you took 64,000 words out of a King James Bible, it'd be like leaving out the book. This is, this is what it would be paramount to. It'd be like leaving out of the book. If you took 64,000 words out of the book, it, you could take out the book of Obadiah, Jonah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Haggai, Matthew, Colossians, 
2 Thessalonians, 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 John, 2 John, Jude, and Revelation. That, it, it, that's what it equals to. These are just a few of the verses that are removed. Not changed, taken out. Completely gone. Ripped out of the box. And that's just a few. They say it makes it easier to understand. We, we wrote the Bible because it's too hard to understand. Well, listen, God speaks like nobody else speaks. I don't want my Bible to read like a newspaper. Yeah. I want my Bible to read different because that book's different. Yeah. And God's different right. than the world we live in. This is what your Bible says. Is there any taste in the white of an egg in the book of Job? ESV. Is there any taste in the juice of a mallow? First of all, what's a mallow? <laughs> Second of all, I didn't even know they had juice. Do you know what a mallow is? Look. Or is there any taste in the white of a marshmallow? You mean tell me marshmallows go on a plant? <laughs> You doubt me? You look these verses up. All I did was cut copy and paste. Look here. Eating is an insipid thing without salt. Is there any sense in the drill of drink? Okay. We was talking about eggs a while ago when we went to marshmallows. Now we're talking about drink. He talking about eating something. How you eat a drink? Here's the message. I throw this in for comment. Is it any wonder that I'm screaming like a cage cat? <laughs> the arrows of God Almighty are in me, poison arrows, and I'm poisoned all through. God has dumped the whole works on me. Can you hear Job saying that? Son, God's dumped the whole works on me. Donkeys bray and cows move when they run out of pasture. So don't expect me to keep quiet in this. Do you see what God has dished out for me? It's enough to turn anyone's stomach. Everything in me is repulsed by it. It makes me sick. <laughs> It's easy to understand, remember? Those new versions. That's why we we got to rewrite because that King James Bible is too hard to understand. The slime of the purslane. Does anybody know what purslane is? Does anybody know what the slime of the purslane is? Anything that's got called purslane and it's got slime, I probably don't want no part of it. Now you tell me which is easier to believe. Is there any taste in the white of an egg? Yeah. Or is there any taste in the slime of the purslane? Don't give me this hogwash. It's easier to understand. You know your King James Bible is written on a sixth grade level. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, we're making it easier to understand. Let me show you this. I'm good now. I got to quit. Therefore, the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a sign. That's a reference to your darling Savior yes, being born. Hallelujah! God called it thousands of years before He showed up. A virgin shall conceive. Look, a young woman shall conceive. Mm -hmm. Now let me tell you, what kind of miracle is that? Right. Thousands of young women conceive every day. Amen. That is not a miracle. A virgin conceiving, that's a miracle. Amen. But see what they did? They attacked the virgin birth. Right. This is the footnote in the RSV concerning this verse. Although it's clear that Emmanuel lived in the days of Ahaz and his immediate successors, we cannot identify him with certainty. You might not be able to, but I can. Yeah. The young woman, his mother, may have been the wife of Isaiah, a woman of the royal family and woman of Judah. That's a reference to the Son of God. Are you nuts? Right. Yeah. There's no evidence that he lived in the time of Ahaz. They made it up and presented it as a fact. Made it up. Lie. They attack the virgin birth. Watch for this. A girl who is presently a virgin will get pregnant. Boy, what, what a prophecy. <laughs> what that says is a girl right now who's a virgin, one day she's going to get pregnant. Yeah. Imagine that. Shocking. I dare say I've known millions of women that, have, that were virgins and then got married and then had a baby. That ain't no prophecy, folks. Right. A woman who's a virgin right now 
one day is going to have a baby. That ain't a prophecy. You've attacked the virgin birth. What about this one? I'll give you this and I'm done. What are, and what shall you do in word day? Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Notice this. Giving thanks to God, one person, and the Father by Him. Who's the Him? The God right there. They're the same person. You see that? Amen. Giving thanks to God, one person, and the Father by Him. Well, who's the Him? God and Jesus. See that? Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. They're two different people. Notice the new version. Giving thanks to God the Father. You see it? Giving thanks through Him to God the Father. You just ripped the deity of Christ out of the Bible. Amen. You see it? Ladies and gentlemen, somebody is after your wife. And by God's good grace, that's a hill I'm worth. I, I am willing to die. Amen. I not only believe every word, not only do I use a King James Bible, I believe every word. Amen. Tonight, God wrote one book. Everything else is trash. Amen. Everything else is demonically inspired. Amen. You say, how do you know that? Well, they attack the virgin birth. They attack the deity of Christ. They attack the blood of Christ. They promote sinners living wickedly. They, they, they attack all of those fundamental doctrines of the Bible. Now, I've just shown you the difference. This ain't even a complete study. I had to quit. I could have kept going for another two hours. Tonight, you have the truth wrapped in leather in a King James Bible. Thank God for it. I believe it. Stand on it. Read it. Love it. Believe it. Trust it. And, and I promise you, it's enough to get you home in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. And so listen, I, I'm not, listen, a lot of folks just don't know. They just don't know. Yeah. They, they're just ignorant. They, they really, they have no clue. Yeah. They're not vicious or mean-spirited. Right. They're not trying to be rebellious. They just don't know. Right. Yeah. But I've shown you enough to reveal to you the trick of the devil is messing with that book and changing the words. Right. Taking the blood out. Taking the deity of Christ out. Taking the reason he came. Matthew 18, 11, you can't even find it. Taking out, you know, that Jesus came to, uh, not to destroy men's lives, but to save them, and took it out. You attack the ministry of Christ, the birth of Christ, the blood of Christ, and the deity of Christ. And you promote sinners to live like the devil. I'll give you one guess who did. It's the devil. As we stand. Father, we love you. We thank you for the good word of God. Thank you that I've got the truth bound in leather. Thank you for its truth. Thank you, Lord, that for its accuracy. Thank you, Lord, that it is absolutely perfect and accurate and there are no flaws and there are no faults in it. And Father, tonight I am so grateful and thankful for the Word of God. I pray you help us to honor it, live by it, read it, love it, stand on it, and do right by it. And Lord, if we'll honor that book, you'll honor us. We love you. Please go with us now as we go. Keep your hand up, protect us, keep us safe. Bring us back to the next appointed hour in Jesus' name. Amen.